good morning or afternoon wherever it is for you guys welcome back to my channel so today we've got a really really good video and one that I think a lot of people will want to watch the do's and don'ts around barbell back squats probably one of the hardest movements just behind barbell deadlifts on how to master there are so many different components things that you are getting wrong things that you might be missing out on so I'm here to tell you exactly the things that you need to focus on for your barbell back squat jumping right into it warm up super important something that people skip all the time so making sure that we're doing at least five minutes on the treadmill if you haven't already walked to the gym if we've already walked to the gym and done a nice brisk walk then we're already going to be nice and warmed up for our workout you can up the incline slightly make sure that it's getting your heart rate up making sure it's raising your internal body temperature it's not a squat specific or a leg day specific warm-up however I just like to do this just to get the blood rushing get me in the mind space get some good tunes on and just get warmed up so let's do between two and five minutes on the treadmill now of course this treadmill isn't the exact one that I would have picked for this warm-up but all the other normal treadmills are taken this is a self-running one so it adjusts to the speed in which you walk or run at but you can still get a good power walk in in this one and I find it does actually warm up the quads a lot better now it's really important that you don't want to do any more than between two and five minutes of brisk walking emphasis on the walking you don't want to be doing like a 10 minute sprint you don't want to be running but this is just a warm-up so all we're doing is just raising our body temperature slightly we don't want to be doing a full-on blown run before our squat the reason for this is because if you're expending a lot of energy in your warm-up then you're not going to have any energy for your squat and your squat is a compound movement so it's going to be using multiple lower body muscles it's going to require a lot of rest so we want to conserve that energy but still warm up our body a little bit grab a mat and we're going to start with our dynamic stretches so what i mean by dynamic is moving stretches none of this kind of static hold where you're just staying in one position that is just for our cool downs we want to be in a constant state of flow we want to be mimicking the movements that we're going to be doing first off to warm up the inner thighs something that people forget about we're just going to come into a butterfly stretch position but instead of holding it we're just going to bounce those knees on the outside so what this is going to do is going to warm up our inner thighs our adductors as well so just do that for around 20 seconds next we're going to stretch our hip flexors they are going to be required for the bottom portion of the squat when they are contracted so making sure they're warm they're strong all we're going to do is come up onto our knee and we're going to sit back on our hips and then we're going to push our hips slightly out towards that non-working leg two and I'm going to do five four five and I'll just show you from a different angle so you can see we're going to lift up and twist slightly towards the opposite way two three four so you're going to go for five again five we're going to do some body weight squats so we're going to mimic that movement that we're just about to do so we're going to go down you might not be able to start very deep because we're just about getting warm i want you just to do 10 body weight squats try and increase that depth every time once we've done 10 we're going to come down into it that deep squat position we're going to put our elbows on the inside of our knees and what we're going to do is use our elbows to push our knees out you should get a nice stretch in the groin nice stretch in the inner thighs i'm going to move my weight over each ankle and this will be stretching our ankles as well and what we can do here as well is just add in a little extra hamstring stretch so what we're going to do push our bottom up to the sky now don't worry here if you can't extend to the point where you have straight legs just go to wherever's comfortable so extending our hips and our butt back up to the ceiling we're also going to lower up our warmer back a little bit while we're here in the deep squat position so we're going to add in a twist so right hand down to the floor left arm you're going to rotate your lower spine look up towards where your fingers are you're going to come back over here rotate again Ooh. Our lower back stiff today you're going to do four on each side we're going to do a 
another hip flexor stretching exercise. So this is going to be a hip 90-90. So we're going to have our knees towards the ceiling, have nice open knees, open up our stance a little bit. All we're going to do is just tap one knee on the inside down towards the mat. So feel free to rotate your hips here a little bit. This is going to get our hip flexors nice and warm. So you can even do both knees. So both knees down to the left side. 90 degrees, both knees down to the right. If you've got really flexible hips and you want to add in another portion of stretching, what we can do is add in a rotation. So you know that little hip opener that we did earlier, we're going to add that in, okay? So you're going to come up, squeeze. So have your hands clasped together for balance at the front. 90-90, come up and squeeze. 90-90, knees down to the floor, come up, stretch that hip. One more hip flexor stretching exercise. You can have your feet out in front of you. I'll come to the side slightly so you can see. So feet out straight in front of you, nice straight legs. Use your hands behind you for some support, nice straight back. All we're gonna do is lift our toes to the ceiling. So you wanna keep that leg nice and straight. We're gonna go for five. And you'll feel that this is working, that it's very sore. My right hip flexor is a lot stronger and a lot more flexible. So you'll see, you see on the right side, I can get a lot more height with this one. So those are our hips nice and warm. We also did some bodyweight squats to get our knees nice and warmed up. Now we're going to focus on a bit of ankle mobility. One thing that's very common is people's heels. So the back of their foot will raise off when they're in their contracted lower squat position. So what this indicates is that you have poor ankle flexibility. So doing ankle mobility is really, really important important for improving your barbell squats. So how we can do this is one main exercise with a few different variations and we will call this the deep ankle lunge or knees over toes. So I'll show you the beginner version of that. So we're going to start in a lunging position here, one foot out in front, one knee on the floor. All we're going to do is reach our knee as far over our ankle as we can. Now we want our heel to be on the floor. If that heel starts lifting we've gone too far past our range of motion. Motion. so only go as far as you can without your heel lifting off the back of the floor so let's not push ourselves too far we want to keep that heel on the ground all we're going to do as well extra stretch on the hamstrings come back straighten the leg Once you've done five on each side, you'll be nice and warm. A, another a variation of this is you can start to add in a weight once you get really experienced and really flexible. You can use maybe a five kilo plate or a kettlebell. This one weighs around eight or six kilos. I'm gonna put that kettlebell on that knee that's going over our toes. And that way, when you come into this position, you're adding a bit of extra weight onto that. It's gonna enhance the stretch. Just be careful if you're not experienced to not do this. You can also bring it back into the hamstring stretch. Just be careful not to overextend your knee. So it's really gonna help us deepen the stretch. You can add, progress or regress the weight. The more flexible you get, this is another challenge you can add in is just adding an extra weight onto that knee to deepen the stretch. Another thing that's really important for barbell squats is having literally bulletproof knees. So making sure that our tendons around our knees are strong and that they're supporting us in that bottom of the squat. We want to be doing three different exercises. We want to be doing a form of leg extension. So the leg extension machine and you want to make sure that you're pausing at the top holding those reps you just want to make sure use a nice light weight for this because if you're holding at the top for three to five seconds then it's going to be quite tough you're not going to be able to do your regular weight that you normally do on the leg extension if you're already on the leg extension for your working sets you can probably finish on these so i'd recommend being one to two sets of these so all you're going to do just same as a regular leg extension is you're just going to keep that isometric hold at the top for three to six seconds and you're going to really slow the eccentric now if your knees are pretty comfortable you can even go lighter and hold it for longer so you're contracting your quads and your knees at the top so that's what i mean by leg extension holds having that two to th um, three to six sorry second isometric hold at the top slow eccentric real burner for those legs what we also want to be doing apart from using the leg extension machine is 
is wall sits. So coming down, pressing your lower back against the wall, having a 90 degree bend, pretending you've got an imaginary bench to sit on. So you can have your hands clasped, you can have your hands crossed across your chest. And I normally like to do these for about three sets of one minute. If you can't do one minute, maybe three sets of 30 seconds, give yourself a couple of minutes rest in between. So this is a great finisher for our leg days if we're really wanting to burn out the quads, but it's also great for strengthening our knee tendons. Our knees tend to be the joint that gets the most injured on the lower body and our rotator cuff tends to be the, the most likely injury for the upper body. So really important to have strong knees. I'm gonna show you one more knee exercise that's gonna be really beneficial. We have a muscle in the front of our shins called the tibialis, or the tibialis anterior. And if this muscle is strong, then our knees are gonna be well, well supported. Come back against the wall, we're gonna lean. All we're gonna do is just lift our toes up to the ceiling here lift so I've got semi straight legs lifting our toes up to the ceiling back down I'll show you up a closer view so you can see what I'm doing so we call this specific exercise the tibialis raise this is just body weight there are certain machines you can get a plate loaded tib raise with a foot lever over our feet but it's very rare that you find that machine in a commercial gym once you've progressed past the body weight ones I usually do three sets for 20 reps once you find this too easy you can also graduate to strapping a dumbbell to your foot so what you do is you get a resistance band strap the dumbbell to your foot you then sit on a bench and then you can flex your foot up and down bring the toes up to the ceiling and then that way you're also training your tips as well start off with the body weight and then you want to increase the dumbbell as well so now that we're fully warmed up for our barbell squat next thing is you're going to head over to a squat rack so the adjustment of the squat rack hooks are really important to make sure that you're able to unrack the bar comfortably and safely and be in a more stabilized position. We want to set these hooks just below shoulder height. So usually there's a twisting mechanism where you twist and then you're able to pull them out. So I'm going to come and compare my shoulder against the bar. So I'm going to go just below 22. Count how many holes from the bottom. That way you avoid putting the hooks on different, different heights. If you've got a choice of a barbell, I would suggest going with a thicker one. The reason for this is the thicker the barbell, the more surface area it's going to be spread across, so it's going to be more comfortable on your traps. So quite often, especially if we've trained upper body recently or if we have a weak upper body, the barbell itself will feel uncomfortable. One thing here to never do for a barbell squat is use a barbell pad, so like a hip thrust pad. As soon as you do that, you're making yourself unstable because it's squishy and because it's not stable, it's now wobbling around on your back, so not going to be in a stable position. So making sure we eliminate that barbell pad and that we're just raw dogging the barbell on our back. If it is uncomfortable, wear a hoodie. You know, it's something that you get used to, same as your grip strength. It's just an uncomfortable evil we have to live with. So the standard weight for a Olympic barbell is 20 kilos. You may find that there are 15 kilo barbells somewhere, but they will be thinner and more uncomfortable on your back. The reason we don't want it any higher than this is because when we go to unrack the bar, we want to be in a bent position. So when I press up, I can unrack it off the bar without it risking hitting the hooks. So you want to make sure that that barbell is set lower than your shoulder height. Footwear, something I'm going to touch on. You want to have flat feet, okay? Do not wear your running shoes. Do not wear sliders. They're unsafe. We want a flat soled shoe, so something like a Converse or Nike Blazer is going to be good. If you don't have a flat sole shoe, you can squat in socks, depending on what your gym etiquette is and what they allow you to do. Just make sure they're not slippy because sometimes squat racks are on this wooden material that can be slippy. So if you are in socks, make sure you're on the rubber tarmac side of things. So now we need to add in some body weight squats with the bar, okay? Now, if you're a beginner, you may only be able to squat the bar and that's perfectly fine. When we're unracking the bar, 
hands just over shoulder width apart. The wider grip you have, the less stability you're going to have. So shoulder width apart, use the little markings on the bar as a reference point. And then you're going to come underneath the bar. You're going to rest it on your traps. So the back of your shoulders here. You're going to find your positioning under the bar. Now I like to center myself, make sure I'm even by kind of like wiggling a little bit. Now this only works if you don't have any skin out. If you have skin, then you can't do that little wiggle. So once you've centered yourself and it's sat on your traps, this is a high bar squat. A low bar squat would be something like this, okay? Now I squat high bar because I've got very short legs, but some people prefer having a low bar, but it's totally up to you. So if once you've got it on your traps, retract the shoulders so that you have a nice little shelf in your upper back. Once you've got it there and once you've got a little bit of a knee bend, breathe in. When you breathe out, unrack and stand tall. Now, if you've set the barbell to the correct height, you should be able to do two steps back, just two. And then you can also kind of center your feet as well. And then once you've got those shoulders retracted there, once you're comfortable and in position, you're going to start your squat. So let's do 10 warm-up reps. to also because I'm relatively strong is I like to sit at the bottom of my final warm-up set squat I just like to have a little bounce warm my knees up warm my lower back up I also like to lean into the left and the right side to warm up both ankles now you may not have this mobility it's just something that I like to incorporate into that last rep once you finish your warm-up you're gonna walk that bar forward two steps again until it hits the rack now don't lean down before that once you hit the rack then you can bend down and it should just slot into the hooks. Now we're fully warm and we're ready to start adding some plates on. If you're struggling again with that ankle mobility, what you can do to elevate your heels a little bit is use two small plates or I like to use the bumper plates. So what I mean by bumper plates is the big, big flat rubber plates like this. You don't want those mini kind of gym plates that you get. You want big bumper plates like this because I find okay, they're not that tall. If you're going to put your plate on the floor we're going to elevate our heels if we're finding that our heels are coming off the floor during our squat it means we've got poor ankle flexibility and poor lower back stability as well whilst we're working on the ankle mobility side of things we can add in a plate heel elevation to help keep those heels on the floor you're going to find your heels onto the plate just the heels here now you should find your depth is improved a lot more and there's no risk of your ankles coming off the floor either so this is a great little hack you can also use two small 1.25 or 2.5 plates I just find because the bumper plates are rubber they're less likely to move whereas if you've got two small plates they may shift out from under your feet and this can be dangerous so that's one little hack to fix your heels raising off the floor however you do still need to do all those ankle exercises I showed you to increase your range of motion around the ankle joint now I'm going to show you a low bar squat okay so I don't squat low bar so please feel free to <laughs> feel free to critique my form for the low bar squat but the low bar instead of sitting on our upper traps it's going to sit more down towards our shoulder blades so you're going to center yourself so this is a low bar squat okay can you see it's sitting much lower down on my body it allows you to lean back a bit more so people with long femurs often do a low bar squat and it allows you to drive up with your hips a lot more you might see a lot of power lifters using a low bar squat now my upper body is just not flexible enough for this so I don't find it very comfortable but definitely try out both positions high bar and low bar see what you prefer but to be honest if you're short and you've got short femurs a short lever length on your legs high bar is going to be great you're going to be in a more upright position and more stable low bar is for my taller girlies longer leg girlies I 
I usually like to do two warm-up sets. So I'll do one with no weight on the bar at all. And then we go into a lighter set. So before you go into your two, three working sets of squats, I would always, instead of jumping just from no weight on the bar, jump up to like 60% of your working weight. So I've just got 40 kilos on the bar here. So I'm going to do another 10 reps on this second warm-up round, okay? You'll realize in that <laughs> traps retracted shoulders retracted position, it can be very uncomfortable for people who are inflexible. So I always like to do a few shoulder dislocations with a resistance band to warm up the upper body. And also really important just to stretch your wrists out a little bit. You've got to remember in that position under the barbell, you've got a lot of pressure on your wrists because they're hyperextended underneath the bar. When it comes to the actual form of a squat, once we've unracked and got our the feet in the right position. The correct positioning for a squat is you want to have our feet just wider than shoulder width. Some people prefer narrow, some people prefer wider. It's whatever you feel stable with. Depends on so many factors. Flexibility depends on um, how tall you are, the lever length of your femurs as well, your legs. So I like to go just over shoulder width apart, toes pointed out. Common misconception with squats, do allow your knees to go over your toes. It's a very natural position. So all you want to be doing is pushing your hips backwards. Imagine that you're sitting on a box. Push the hips back, allow the knees to bend, come down to 90 degrees. Nice neutral spine, we're keeping our chin tucked in, pushing up. Before you unwreck, find your traps, retract your shoulders, center yourself, breathe in. Breathe out when you unwreck. Two steps back. Center your feet. Toes pointed slightly out, shoulder width apart. Brace. So what I mean by brace is we're going to take a deep breath in, increase that intra-abdominal pressure before you go down. This is going to help stabilize our lower back and our core and keep a neutral spine. So deep breath in. Once you've taken that breath in, you hold that breath as you come down towards the 90 degree bend. Once you've hit that 90 degrees, big breath out on the way up. That's going to help us be explosive. So control the way down, control the weight. 90 degrees, breathe out, explosive on the way up. Careful not to lock your knees out at the top as well. Once we're done, walk forward and re-rack. So walk forward until you feel the bar having contact with the squat rack and then drop down. But I won't be able to talk during this because it's quite heavy, but remember to control your breathing, brace that core. Breathe in, increase the pressure, almost like someone's gonna punch your stomach. And then when you go down, you're gonna have a nice stable back. Breathe out. Do not breathe out earlier. If you breathe out at the bottom, you're gonna lose all that core stability. I'm very experienced with squats, so I don't put the spotting racks on. But if you're not, then I would recommend that you have them just below 90 degrees. So if you do need to chuck the weight off your back, they're just gonna go onto the rack. So there's a lot of room for error when people are spotting squats, because if you decide to throw the weight off, it's gonna go in their face. I would always use the spotting racks if you have them, rather than a spotter, especially if it's not someone you trust. Because if you've got someone spotting you, you don't know what they're gonna do. They might help you too early or put you off. So it's definitely safer to use those racks but I will also show you how to bail the squat if you need be. So to bail a squat at the bottom theoretically if you got stuck here what you do is you'd bring your knees forward out the way of the bar path. So once you get stuck here at the bottom or if it even gets stuck here come all the way down bring those knees forward it's got to be quite quick motion so bring your knees forward and then you let the weight go off the back okay but again it's not something I recommend because you know your knees might get injured on the wooden floor 
as well. But I will show you anyway. And theoretically, if I were to fail at the bottom, what I do, knees come forward and then let your hands come away from the bar like this. And make sure you come back and steady the bar and stop it rolling into someone else's path. Just a quick one on aids for barbell squats. Yes, a weightlifting belt has its place. It's not for beginners to use a belt. If you're looking to specifically increase your strength on squats or deadlifts, if you're a power lifter or you just need a bit of extra core support when you start to get up to those high weights between 80 to 100% of your one rep maximum, then you can start to incorporate a belt. But you need to be sure first you're able to get your core bracing technique down. Also training without a belt is going to help you improve your core stability as well. It's not there to replace a weak core. You need to have a strong core first. Just use that belt to help give you the extra pressure, the support on your lower back when you're trying to hit those PRs, hit those top sets between one and three reps. And when you brace, when you push your stomach out into that belt, have a bit more support on your back and your core. You want to make sure you either opt for a lever belt or one with a clip rather than like a velcro belt because that's not going to be giving you support. You want a nice hard leather belt or suede belt. Another thing you could invest in if you're really into your powerlifting is powerlifting shoes. Now these actually have a heel ele elevation inside but then the sole is flat so they're specifically designed for keeping your feet flat and making sure you've got no heel lift when you're squatting or deadlifting. You could also use wrist wraps as well if you want a bit of support when your wrist is hyperextending under the bar but again you know just make sure you improve your wrist flexibility. Definitely equipment is not necessary but if you're looking to hit those big numbers improve your strength they can be an aid just get your form down first. <laughs> Now I haven't tried 80 kilos in about half a year, so this should be fun. I'd quite like to see if I can hit this for depth. uber heavy on my back though but I think that's enough for today and call it there all right guys so that was my video on how to perfect your barbell squat so I will put a summary of everything that I've mentioned in the description please make sure that you do subscribe if you found this useful I'm thinking about doing a similar video for deadlifts for bench as well so if you think that this would be useful for you comment below the exercise that you'd like to see me go through next and please also do drop your questions below in the comments and please subscribe it really helps me out and fuels me to keep making that content for you guys so so have a really good day and I can't wait to see your barbell squat increase by 20 kilos tomorrow. All right, see ya.